see you all. Um, I have sent meeting notes along from our last meeting. Were there any comments about them? Mm -hmm. okay. I also sent along the CIP, uh, and there were some. They incorporated the changes uh, suggested by Chief Ducharme, but also a couple of changes that he requested since that time. Because uh, I asked him to clarify the, the vehicle, because he stopped it whatever year it was, right. and the train goes out. So you may maybe saw the email and sent to him, but I was asking how how should that look in the outer years? I mean, go back to purchasing, you know, what should mean? And so he said, uh, keep we keep it releasing. So if you look at if you print it out the uh, latest plan, the green boxes represent the start of the new lease. In essence, that means anything. So overall, you know, there's an increase to that line. But there would have been anyway, because I'm sure the $25,000 would have saved $25,000, which we would have put in the booster. So just, you know, across the 10 years, it's $305,000. $305,000. Yes. Yeah. So, so there's that. And he asked to remove was the radios yeah. that he was going to ask the board about putting in the operating budget. So I removed the radios. And he asked to put yeah, a digital go, fingerprint. Go. Thank you. Not to keep people. He asked to put it to, to next budget year. So I did that. Uh, I also put the 20, I mean, there's, there's no money for it, so the whole 20,000 is in. So those are, that's what, that's the update. The version one is really just updating the RPT. Um, I'm sorry, the radios? R video cameras? Oh, okay. Video cameras. Sorry. Okay. No. Nope. <laughs> you CC us with the correspondence with him saying he was going to okay. suggest that when you I saw that okay. CC. Yeah. So he, he said he was going to talk to the Okay. But that does bring to mind um, what Caroline said last at our last meeting about the DRA and the CIP warrant. Is the, can the board get that clarified? The board and or Caroline get that clarified? What if there's a threshold? Or no, no, not a threshold. There's no threshold. Okay. That, that's not what needs to be clarified. It's, it's about the enabling legislation. Yes. We have to go back and find a warrant article when the CIP fund was created. Oh, okay. Check the language. Does it seem as though it allows for equipment? And if it does not explicitly, then we might want to consult with DRA minimally. Um, but if we're going to include something that might be equipment rather than some other kind of capital, then um, a vehicle is equipment. Well, that's I mean, you know, like so half it's, the, it's, at least half the That's why. Like, uh, Unless it's a building, it, like, could, could we get this? Could we yeah. get it clarified? Because if, if this was yeah. going to keep coming up, it's just one of these little forty little things that I have to just. Yep. I hope you agree. Just get it clarified. And if there's some kind of language change that she thinks we need to make it clearer, then perhaps that can be suggested to the to the board to consider. Okay. okay. Can I see vehicles and things like that consistently on the CIP? Yeah, that are vehicles, equipment, arguably. Uh, I think the issue, is if I recall, is it yeah, of course it is. But the issue for for the DRA was that if the individual pieces were like you know a thousand dollars, even though they were hundred. And so I, I'm just making a point. I don't really know what the detail was. So in the aggregate, it was pretty. It was a large enough number, I think, right. for everybody to say, yeah, this is CIP. But they were individually pieces of equipment were not that large and so but again I, I don't we're just yeah yeah just let yeah. can we just get more information on that thank you appreciate it all right all right if there are no other um, questions about where version one is then we're ready for our head presentations is there uh, who, who who are we having at first
Um, that is the discretion of the chair, Madam Chair. Um, well, okay, is who's here? Is we we here? have Highway present. <laughs> Come on down, George. <laughs> Uh, nice to see you. So, so we can, let, let me bring up the. Uh, let's see if there are any questions that we might have about the current one. Thank you for forwarding the information on the piece of equipment. I don't know mm -hmm. who I got it from. Was that you? George gave it to me, and I sent it along. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, can I just ask some questions about what's currently on the plane? So. I've got replaced the 2019 Freightliner. So what is that? What is that? I don't know. That's way down. That's the truck. That, that's the truck that's that we're buying now. All right. So that's just so we don't forget. Right. And that's All why right. there's nothing well, else. That's why it says 2019. That's right. It. Duh. <laughs> okay. I got it now. That's fine. Um, particular lower. I guess what we're talking about. Lower, 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 lower. Yeah, that was me. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. We'll get it fixed. <laughs> All right. I don't think we have any other questions. So, so you can either walk us through what's already on the the plan from last year, or or take us through. All right. Then we can just go lines and lines. Let me correct this right now. It's articulator, articulator, articulating, lower. articulating. Sidewalk machine, if you want to put it, make it easy. Okay, so why don't you talk to us about that? As you know, these, the bobcat we have is too big for most of the sidewalks in town, so we can not tree or plow most of our sidewalks. So in the past, we have just not. We've just done the main drag and the road, the locust, and we can do Stockdale, but it's still too wide for Stockdale. We're digging up the grass that we flower most of the time. So uh, my suggestion is to buy a machine that fits our sidewalks and also has a sander on it so we can treat our sidewalks which we don't have the capability of doing right now. And this machine uh, also used most of the equipment that the Bobcat has. So we're not getting rid of the Bobcat, we're going to keep that for the transfer station for uh, loading the baler and other things around the transfer station and we'll also be able to use it on the road if we need to. This is the better machine to go over the road. Besides, uh, this Bobcat is not designed to be run cross country. We have to trailer it most of the time uh, when we use it. I mean, the snow blowing when we start out, we still we can start out and just continue to get onto the sidewalk. But most of the sidewalks are five feet wide. The sidewalk, this, this Bobcat is almost six feet wide. The snow blower on is five and a half feet wide. And the tie is falling off the curb at 90% of the time when you're trying to do sidewalks. Can I ask a really stupid question? Are, are we obligated to do sidewalks? It's, so that would go back to our snow removal ordinance. We would have to consult that. And the town is not liable for whatever winter maintenance is as long as we articulate whatever that is in the snow removal ordinance. So the answer to that is in that ordinance. but. Um, I would say simply it's part of the biotic way, so that probably if they exist, we should maintain them in all aspects. Caroline, you just used a word, the meaning of which I know not. Biotic. What does that mean? A, a way that to, that is traversed. It's it's um it's it's how it, it's. It's a way that you. It's it's so it's, an air, you, it's, it's a road. It's a road, and it's and it's right of way, and it's and it's a something that's traveled upon, which might not just be a road, but something else you travel on, like a path or sidewalk. I think it comes from the root of the. Uh, I, I understand. It's it's but it's, I have it's a Latin. question as well. In the past, have we ever paid outside contractors, vendors, anything for snow remo removal? Because we haven't had the bomb cat in service. So the sidewalks. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Have you ever paid outside contractors to service this? But, uh, that was, would have been way back. I, mean, I don't know. That was prior to me. We've had the Bobcat since 2013 when I was on the board, so... The only thing I'm aware that we ever paid for with regard to snow removal was the removal of snow when it gets piled up downtown. We would come in and, come in and we would take some snow away, but the not for the removal the of, like, not for the clearing of streets or sidewalks. I've seen the past that 
I, I, I've seen the uh, town back in the day. I don't know if it was the one town that had a dump body on it with a nine foot plow, one wheel on the sidewalk, one wheel off, and I remember it. So I went to it and had, you know, just cut into that very corner, you know, the edge. But that's how they've done it. Um, mm -hmm. if we, we've only had a town, we've only had our own podcast since 13. Uh, it could be before. Oh, well, I was already, or, it was already okay. here in 2013. I think it's a 2009 machine. Mm -hmm. And they had one prior to that. Mm -hmm. I've got to think we had something before that. And it was one prior right service. Yeah. Not, um, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, like, maybe sell to me uh, the expense for this unit. Yeah, that's, it is expensive. Yeah, that it's more expensive than the truck we bought last year. Not, not the big truck. No, it's wonderful. It's not, you know, service like, truck. But what are we lacking? I mean, granted, that Bobcat can't accurately. In my, in my front yard, it's dug up, and I'm not complaining because I know it's what you do. We try to do that sort of around and hide it. But, um, you know, I just need to see what else are we gaining by this vehicle that we don't already have the implements to do, perform now. You know, because we, the, the, we have the bucket loader still. We have the backhoe. The backhoe. Backhoe, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the backhoe. Um, and a bobcat. And a bobcat. Um, that's two pretty personal machines that you can do. I mean, that's what I'm saying. What are, what are we gaining by this articulating loader beyond the size of we, that, This machine could be used for anything we need to use on the outside. I mean, instead of running the backhoe, the bobcat down the road, you know, the new project. This will also, the motor will work better on this, better visibility. That same motor we already have, we'll be able to see better with it. Bobcat, you cannot see behind you or anything. You've got to be, you've got to be in the, into the camera all the time, but you're also going to be paying attention to what's going on in front of you. And you can't, you know, the mower's fine, we can mow with it, with the Bobcat. However, the visibility isn't as good as, you know, you'd expect. We can use this uh, machine for actually loading our trucks, which we cannot do in this case. We can fill a small truck, but we cannot fill the big the bucket. Not the uh, backhoe. The backhoe can. So, so we do have the backhoe. We do still have this this the skid steer, skid steer, bobcat. We have the mower that fits to you know. So all these things this thing can do, but we're already doing them with our existing equipment. So I'm just I, you know I gotta justify the expense. This is you know, this is expensive, and you know. Everywhere so in the town needs money right now, so I understand. Well, well, let me piggyback on you. I mean, we so we have at least we have a ten-year-old um, bobcat. Correct. And, and I don't know if it was bought new or used when we bought it. I believe probably. But not. it's but it's ten years old, and I don't know what the life expectancy is. But so what's the life expectancy of this new of this new? Um, you it depends on your hour usage. Yeah. You know, I mean, the bobcat's hours are getting up there. It's yeah. Got, uh, I want $1,400 on it now. And, and that's a really And would this take the place of, if, if the bobcat fails, would this... We could it, take, I'm just we could just trade this or, or when it fails. machine for it, and then use that new machine to do everything. Hmm. we got to keep in mind, the bobcat needs a set of tires, hmm. and I'm not cheap. So, the, so these are the, uh, so there might be a, there might be a, you know, I mean, it's, the, there might be a redundancy a for a few machine. years, but then it might, there might not be. I'm mean, just trying to also Well, and say then the redundancy would way. perhaps extend the life of the older yeah. vehicle. Right. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying there might be a, there might be a reason. No, I mean, I'm not here just to want, just because I want something. I'm here because the sidewalks need to be maintained. Yeah. They need to be salted. And there's no way we can salt. We can drive down the sidewalk with the truck. But again, you can't do that on most of your streets, you know. And then downtown, for clearing the snow off the sidewalks downtown, it's you know it, you're getting around the pole, but you're barely fitting between the pole and you know the curb. And I'm just trying to you know we can clear more sidewalks with this machine than we can, we have now. I mean, and for removing snow, it's a much better piece of equipment. So more sidewalks, is it every sidewalk? We'd be able, well, there's some sidewalks that are three and a half feet wide that I wouldn't even attempt, but, but most of your sidewalks are five feet, and you should be able to do every sidewalk with that. This lower on this machine is 48 inches wide. So the, the plan to um, transfer this to the transfer station? The, 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 the skid steer. Yes, the skid steer. And I think you talked a little bit about that. I, I quite get it, but... Are, are we then, are, are we then, is that just a temporary thing when it finally fails, the, we the new get, machine we, just... You could, the new machine could fail it. So, so given that, given that there isn't necessarily a need for 
the transfer station to have its own separate piece of equipment. Do we know what we might be able to get on a trade or a sale? I haven't looked into that it. That would reduce the overall impact on the... I can, get, I can look into that. I mean, that... Well, and we also... At least probably get an idea. And down that same line, can we take the skid steer off the CIP and not replace it? That's what I mean. Where is it currently? Is it on this it's Oh, it's in the transfer station. Yeah, yeah, it was just moved down there. And that's only 33000 for a, a log cut? The existing to replace the cash for what? Oh, oh, that's not updated. Years I, didn't, I don't know what the new numbers are for that. Yeah. That's probably what they, it's probably what they paid for originally. It's thirty three thousand. So that's not counting. I mean, they've added implements to it. I'm sure since then the brooms. I don't know if everything came with it for thirty three thousand no, dollars. I wouldn't think so. So George, the eighty thousand includes. This is no, it, that that was last year's prices. I just adding ten percent to that. It's eighty five to six ninety five. Right. It, it'd be in the ballpark for that machine. 695. Right okay, so 85, 695. Does that include all this stuff that you need? It, that would include the new snowboard, the sander, there is. the bucket, it, it's a bigger bucket on it, uh, which is part of that. Snowboard. A drop sander, and you want, there's two different sets of tires. You have a, in the summertime, you can you put a wider tire for better stability, especially when you're going to use the mower and stuff. And you get a loaded set of tires for the winter use, which makes it narrower so you can, it fits on the sidewalk better. So does that include both those sets of All those items are included in there. Uh, So is there stuff that that you're not including that might come up in the next year or so that you're already thinking of or you think it's the same? The, uh, it, the only thing that I would probably think about adding is, and that would be just for the transfer station use, would be a grappling bucket for moving the bales. But, uh, and that's not necessary. We can do it with the forks, which are, we already have, that we can use. The forks that fit on any piece of equipment that fits on the Bobcat right now will fit on the new machine, like your sweeper and your, uh, the fork, the forks, the mower, the mower. But not the plow. The plow's too wide. <laughs> so, so we could consider removing then from the transfer station, replacing the Bobcat. Yep. Are you are you here to talk about both? Yeah, so that's the only thing that was on there, I think, on the start. So, just as a point of interest, I haven't been on the uh, planning board for, for a while, but sidewalks always come up when there are, when there are sub, subdivisions. And, we, we, and because we, we, the, the planning board knows knows that the town will have to maintain them if they if they say yeah go ahead and put in the sidewalk and and so it's interesting like, yeah. you know you know Stockdale got one put in but but they did not put them in up at uh, Scotland. Oh, I don't believe it's Scotland. Is there a sidewalk there? They do? Oh, I we went around but and around. Scalvain, and around. Scalvain, we, could, we went around and around. Scalvain, we could plow probably put the wing right on the sidewalk because the way it curves. Yeah, it because it's, the way it's done, yeah. Yeah, it, because it, it's, it's a maintenance thing as you, as you go forward. Okay. But again, maintenance, like treating them after you plow it is a big yeah. thing. Well, otherwise they're not very usable, the right. sidewalks. Yeah. Calling for an ambulance. I have 10 minutes. Well, it, it'll it, keep you busy. You know, the other thing from a safety standpoint of plowing the sidewalks is a useful plow of the road. Well, that's true. It's super yeah. sorry to work. Yeah. Keeps people out of the road. So, you know, out yeah. here, people walking down that, kids coming to school, I don't think any of us would want to. I mean, if we don't go there within the same day of the storm, we're, we're hearing phone calls. We go, why are you going to say, I want 
you know, we, we get there as soon as we can. So when I lived in Boston, I had to shovel my own sidewalk. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and now it's a different state. Well, that's what's prompted my yeah. that's what prompted my question. I, right. I mean, yeah. it's just to try to get get all the facts straight. You know, yep. just just understand the situation. And just because we always done something. Correct. You have you need, right. So so then no. you have to you have to manage that. But I just again, can't imagine someone calling and demanding that the Dover schools will not open until the sidewalks are up. Right. So that's helpful. So Dover does the sidewalks. Well, everybody around it. Okay. That's, that's now, thank you. The other thing on top of this, if we went to a sidewalk specific machine, now this is the machine that has had the price of a sidewalk machine. Excuse me. Interesting. Seriously. Sidewalk machines, one hundred and sixty to one hundred seventy thousand dollars. So those little Dover, those little Dover carts we see going around. Specifically made for sidewalks, <laughs> and you can mow with them. Huh. I'm serious. Wow. A tracker sidewalk machine is one hundred sixty thousand dollars. I was going to ask if there was a cheaper machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> it's like the price. It's because because they're smaller. <laughs> no, actually, it's the same size as a sidewalk machine, but and it articulates like a sidewalk machine. But it's more versatile. The sidewalk machine does not have a loader bucket on it. You cannot load trucks with it. It's made for always snow. The, the, the photo. Okay. Okay. So it's a little. It's a little small truck. Sir. Small loader that fits on a sidewalk. I gotcha. Um, and the special things are coming in. Paperwork I sent out. You can see on the on the site. You can see every all the attachments. There is. A number of attachments which we don't, you know, which we don't need. Down the road, if you need something that comes up, I mean, it'll fit on them. It's, so it's all quick attach buckets and everything like that. It's, it's under general use. Do you think this thing lasts ten years, twenty years? I would guess that. You know, or maybe long. You know, it depends what you use. I think that's with anything. Right. Okay. It's, it's, you know, and the operator. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. some, of the, some of these vehicles, yeah. but, you know, you get someone that's been operating for 25 or 30 years, I mean, control, you're going to have different. to pay that man, you know, to, to, to think. We've got equipment, but we've got to be able to pay, you know, the operator. Right. Well, I think that's obviously not my department. Right. And the maintenance to it. What I've seen is the transfer station is actually harder on the equipment than he would be, George would be with his people because they're used to operating that type of machinery. Whereas transfer station, we have a hard time finding help. It ends up being. Yeah, we don't let everybody run it over there anyways. Right. You know what? But, but you know, I know from the past, the maintenance related issues that have come up mm -hmm. with the Bobcat have been more related to the transfer station than mm -hmm. the highway use. So that would be the only thing that I would add on. You know, Good part of having this dedicated to highway versus a shared machine. Again. So, so that the Bobcat was what year? I'm not the, yeah, the Bobcat. What year is the Bobcat? It's before 2013. So only a 10 year old machine. So that, yeah. that realistically that should not be a used up Bobcat. And I didn't say what he knows. You know, yeah, it's 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 very it's capable. It's you know, long, still with many years yet to it. You know, equipment like this, you know, I'm not a farmer, but they would keep those tractors running for 70 years. You know, you, you're buying this is the top of the line. But you also got to remember, you're putting this equipment in salt. Mm -hmm. It takes the, life, the lifespan of anything, you know, probably cut in half. Yes. Yeah. So. Does does the committee think it would be helpful to have a trade-in price or potential sale price for the block cap? I think that would trade-in price. I think it would be valuable to at least know what it's worth. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a major factor. I, I like that factor considering we're investing in this, but we still have value mm -hmm. in the right. block cap. I mean, we great deal of value that this can replace. Value is not, like, if that bobcat value can offset this cost, I just like the truck. We got a pretty good sum of money for the truck we just traded. Yeah. I mean, we didn't trade; we sold it out, right? Uh, what did you sell? What, Twenty-two five. Uh, good job. You know, so, yeah, and, 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 we could have got it at auction for ten five thousand. Right, I mean, I mean, very. I mean, the whole thing about trading it and getting some value for that, not having two. You know, uh, I, 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 I feel better yeah. because I feel about vehicles. 
the way I feel about hiring staff. There, there's a cost that continues for many, many years. And so, so if you're adding a new vehicle and keeping the old one, now you've got, you know, tires for two and this for two and, you know, and, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. So if, if it, I mean, this is, it's expensive. And so should, it, should the group think that it makes sense to do this? I, for me, it, it would be helpful to, to try to get that value back on the, on the skid steer. Like, quickly, like, is this something that can be I can find it. I can get a number next week. I mean, that's a, that's a real Just to get a number. Yeah, yeah right. I see that. I see a tremendous value in that point. You would reduce any maintenance. Why would you buy tires for the old one when you've got a new machine? Right. So, Carol? Two things. Um, is that a state grid price or is that private? And, and does the state and have anything? I don't know if the state even has anything for sidewalk blows. Uh, we can check into that too. So, I think that's worth checking into also. This is a government price. Yeah. Okay, but government price is still different from state bid price. If, and I don't know what's on the bid list. But and I don't there know. There is no other manufacturer that makes. There's no other that's, manufacturer. That's, sold, this is a sole source. This, this size. Really? Not well, it does make it. This is made by Wacker and Newsom. That's the company name. Uh, some of the housing authority has one of these. And they've had it for five or six years now. And actually, I used it in Billwood when. Uh, our sidewalk machine blew up <laughs> for a couple of storms, and that'll get to any storm that the sidewalk specific machine will get through. Or, so, is it made? It's German made. Most of them are. But parts are made serviceable. We can get parts locally for these. Oh, it's not like Holder, which is a brand new sidewalk machine. It was like built in South or something like that. You know, it's, you know, it's, uh, the Holder is. A German machine, and you get to get parts out of Germany, and we, and the price was unbearable. So a lot of them are going with trackless, which has the little, you know, more. But it's still a hundred sixty thousand dollar machine. So I, the other thing is, last year when you proposed this, there were financing options. There were yep, there is still financing options. They would, 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 would still lease purchase. And there was other options, but they threw that out because they didn't want to spend the extra. They didn't bring the price up. Ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, which is true of anything, I think. Right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, they, they stretch it up, and it's time you know, do it over a couple of years. So, George, if um, well, you've got twenty twenty as the requested year, so that's next year. So, if if we don't do it next year, what what does next year look like? I mean, how much money are you might you have to put in the bond cap? Uh, because we're going to be juggling, clearly we're going to, you know, the committee's going to be juggling its recommendations. And whatever we don't, whatever we end up with, the board may still do some right. juggling uh, on their own. I don't so, know what the price of tires are for it, but I know what we're looking at putting tires on it. It's a good steer. Just a, do you have a, just a wall part? They're all loaded, so I, I'm not sure on that. I really, I haven't even looked at it yet. No, I don't think 10,000. Oh, okay, so less than 10. That, that's helpful. Four figures. Well, I'm sure it's going to be, you know, Probably six to eight hundred dollars for a set of tires for that machine. Sixteen hundred? That's uh, eight, no. Eight hundred dollars a tire. A tire. Six to eight hundred dollars a tire. Eight hundred dollars a tire. How many tires is it? Four. Four tires. Yeah. So okay. So you know, eighty thousand dollars. Right. Maybe six thousand dollars. Yeah. And you know, I mean, the hours of getting up on the machine, we you know, we're gonna have to have it completely serviced again. You know, all that hydraulic fluids and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's the machine's getting used a lot. Yeah. So. Understood. It's a balancing act. You know, all of this is just a. It's a I mean, this was on. You requested this last year. And yeah. We, and we put it off. We put it off because of the truck. Um, the big truck. Okay, that's all. Yeah. And there is fifty thousand, and not that that's that's not cast concrete or whatever, but there's fifty thousand in the CIP reserve fund, so. I would venture a guess about that broadcast coming in about twenty to twenty-five thousand. Yeah, that, 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 that would be really uh, helpful I to know, know that. Yeah, that's I can great. find out. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, but I mean, we were offered ten thousand in the trade for the truck, and Dave Mick told us that we should be able to get twenty to twenty-two thousand for it, and so we put it out there at twenty-two, and we got. Twenty-two five for it. With no question, so. Really good. Yeah, 
All right. Any other questions on the articulating loader? All right. The next thing I see on your list is to replace the International 7400 double truck and plow list in 2013. Yeah, that's not down. That's down the road. In 2025, and it currently has a gross capital cost of 190,000. Should we, should we? Uh, I mean, one of the things we're trying to keep the plan as up to date. I'm still here. Yes. I would not suggest another full size dump truck. I would suggest the type we just bought. We bought a mid sized truck. Most of the roads in town, there's three roads in town that we need that big truck to plow. So I think this already reflects, I think we had this conversation when I was on the board. And I think this reflects the downsizing of, of, of the big truck to the size. Why don't we just spend on the 165? Oh. It was a demo. It was a it was demo. No, and that, it would have been, yeah, it and it had more in it than it would have, we would have gotten. Yeah. So do we think 190000 is... Oh, that's probably fair for down the road. Yeah, I mean, you're going to go up 10% a year or whatever. All right. Again, if we shop around... All right, so 2025 still seems like appropriate. Uh, not the way right the truck down. is right now. The truck's in pretty good shape. Right. So you keep it maintained, and, you know. Are you thinking you can go beyond 2025? I mean, you may get a couple more years out of it. I mean, that's, that's not a 10 year old truck. That, yeah. You know, I mean, the only thing that you may end up doing, if the body rots out, you can replace the dump body. Truck, if the chassis is still good, you don't have to replace the whole truck. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at those options in the end, too. So one of the things that's really helpful as we're working on the plan is that when we can extend some of these things, it, it removes some pressure on the, the upcoming years. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling me that we can legitimately look at, at that as 2026 or 2027, that would be helpful. You could probably move it out. Like I said, if, would you, if, if, would you the thing I expect to run out first would be the dump body because that's got salt in it all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, you could put a dump body on a truck for about 50000 No, not if you're not going to have to replace the chassis. Oh, I see. No, oh, it's going to make see. it last for 10 and years. It's not. Oh, I see. And, and buy five or six more years with it. Right. Oh, 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 now, okay, now I'm with you. <laughs> I got it now. <laughs> You know, it, it doesn't have to be a completely new truck every time. That, if the chassis is in good shape, you can replace the dump body. That's what's for itself most of the time. Lovely. So you can't like a fire truck. You can't just take the back of the fire truck off and put a new one. <laughs> so, so clearly, I'm wanting to stretch this out. Okay. Okay. So, and I'm I'm looking to you to say what can we legitimately stretch this out My to? Crystal ball. I'm not going to tell you I, anything. I, no, I understand. But you could probably the yes, truck is. Yes. It's just a guess. I go a couple. Twenty twenty-seven. No, you can get away with a couple. Okay. The Steve Steers of two thousand ten. Thank you. All right, twenty twenty-seven. So let me put that down here because we don't have it. Skid steer. Somebody just found that. Sorry. It's right here on the old paperwork. Say it again. Twenty twenty ten. All right. Next thing on your list is replacing, I guess, the service vehicle. Or five fifty is that the service vehicle? No, that's the uh, that's the that's the that's the baby bear. bear. That twenty fifteen uh, yeah, that's the small baby bear. bear. All right. So seventy thousand twenty twenty six. Again, that. All right. Give me another year. Looking for another year. Just give her a year. It's a pay a year. For one a year, you can have a year. Again, that's another truck that you can change the dump body if the chassis is in good shape. Okay. Can yeah. okay, we put 2028? Only because I've got 2027 now for. 2028, you might be asking somebody else. I, it's okay. <laughs> We're going to be reviewing this every year. That's right. This is. Okay. We can go that way. Thank you. As long as it's your. Best guess right now. Right. Uh, new heating system boiler for twenty thousand. Don't worry about. When is it? We already pushed it off. That was yeah. We pushed that off. 
when I came here, they wanted to replace that boiler, if you remember, right? I do remember. And I said that boiler is only eight years old, and I would not replace the boiler in my house. And it was music to our ears, as I recall. So I think we will just leave it alone. Okay, twenty thousand. Do you want to? Should we change the amount? Does the amount seem okay? I'm not putting a complete heating system in. It might be twenty-five thousand by then. It's just a boiler. Just a boiler. Let's change it. Should, should we change it to twenty-five thousand? Yeah, that may be high. Sure. Uh, backhoe replacement. 2027 for 110,000. Mm -hmm. I have other thoughts. Purchase price. Yes. So I have other thoughts for backup. <coughs> after, after this year, renting is escapade. Mm -hmm. So. So not not having a backup when this one goes. Like there'll be you're going to need an escapade, a mini excavator, something that we can do ditch work and stuff with, and then. A loader, but I still don't know for sure on that. So the loader that we that we can still fill trucks with that new loader that I'm talking about. So that may buy us pieces of equipment that we won't need another one, you know. And we go to a mini excavator, which I think they run around eighty thousand for the, the size that we use. So, so is it your considered opinion that we should remove this backhoe replacement? <clears throat> with a mini excavator. Mini excavator is more versatile for doing road side dishing and pretty much in any dishing we have to do. Thing is, we have to truck it with a trailer. So that's right. Out of this new piece of equipment, we're looking. We're discussing the new piece of equipment tonight. But you maybe just be having when you were looking at back all the place when you first gave us that information. Yeah, I would. I would personally, I would suggest a mini excavator over a back, especially if we have a loader that we can fill that truck with. That, that's the piece of equipment we were discussing earlier. That would be so. Do that. So yeah, it's yeah, already, it's already safe. Already, yeah, yeah. Can I ask a follow-up on that? Mm -hmm. um, is it worthwhile to get a price for that and sell it? If selling that helps get on it, the arts equipment. Okay. So backhoe. So backhoe. If you're going to, no, like, if you're going to do that, you're going to need a mini excavator. We're yeah, not going to run one every year. You've got to have one. So that's okay, so should we revise the CIP the so that, okay, you've got the mini S3 I here. just put it in. I don't have a price. You said something. 60,000. 80. Yeah, I've to verify the price on it, but it's definitely not going to be a big one. Can you get, what would 80 you said? I think around 80,000. Is that going to have thing as 80,000 dollars? It's like a writing lawnmower, but we're losing this well, the one we get will be a little bigger than that. So, could you put something in the notes about that? That, you know, it could potentially, like, so so that we're going from an excavator to a mini excavator and maybe able to sell the existing equipment to a mini excavator. So, so what, we're, what we're possibly suggesting is that we sell the backhoe and buy these two pieces. Sell the backhoe. And, and like the skids here, and buy these two pieces. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily all in the same year, yes. But yes, that's the, the ultimate goal. But you reference the fact that we're looking at trading values to offset right. costs. Is it credit versus debt? I mean, I can look at the TDA. that idea now if you wanted to, but uh, that would be I think well, a little bit more than your eighty thousand. I think you know, kind of baby steps. I'd like to see this new articulating longer in action to see if indeed it does. It's only if the say if the if there's enough value in the backhoe to make it look rather. It right now I, I talked to someone today and they said it doesn't have many hours on it, so it, the piece is worth some money right now. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'll we'll, we'll, the ball we'll let you get some more information and you can maybe feed it to us through Caroline. Is that is that a good mm -hmm. process? Yeah. And it's a mini excavator. I hear that we use one on the road on so I've been renting it for us. Where do you, who do you rent it from? Same company that sells that. Ambrose. Mm -hmm. Ambrose equipment. Ambrose. And roughly, what are we? It's the leasing? Twenty-three hundred a month. Sorry, twenty-three hundred dollars per month. Thank you. If I was renting a cat, it would be forty-five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And every other every other unit is about forty-five hundred. I had an option of four hundred dollars a day, twelve hundred dollars a week, or twenty three hundred for the month. Now, what would you take? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
All right, so that's interesting. Um, I'll see how best to work that into this plan and show you that you know, we can look at it. Uh, replace roof, $45,000 in 2024. I haven't been able to speak to it, but if we are still replacing shingles every winter, every time we get the wind because everything's backwards. Actually, I can, I can speak to this. Okay, yes, if I, please do. So, when I was on the board, I, we did have a roofer look at that. And George is correct. The shingles, the type of shingle is wrong, and they were applied incorrectly. So, it was a double whammy. But, the roofer said, you know, it's going to sound funny, sis, but it's really going to be cheaper for you to replace the shingles as they blow off until about 2024. So that that date for that roof came from a conversation that we had with the roofer. Yeah, and my suggestion would be to put a roof on that building. And then it can, can that be done for $45,000? I don't really know. I haven't checked it. They're really expensive. Yeah, they're really expensive. I mean, that's the place that's not, yeah, but I mean, how big is that shed? Maybe by 60? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I think very possible. It doesn't have to be the absolute, you know. All right, so we'll just leave it to one of the other. It doesn't have to be that one. Is there anything else that's not on this list that you see coming down the pipe? Not, it doesn't have to be you that's here necessarily, but, but for the highway department down the road, is there anything that's... We haven't captured the hurry. Oh, I mean, we haven't had that issue with the consultant roof, so the, you know, uh, that may you know that's that's not on here that's a replacement roof or anything either. But I don't believe the shingles have been coming off that though. How hmm. old is this roof? It's only a 2008. The so you can't go back at I mean they're probably apply. The, we can't go back to Carolyn, do you remember what we did on this? So we, we tried to find somebody. Somebody the person a is not well and may no longer be with us. And so it was not feasible, workable, provable to go back to the contractor. They put on upside down? No, no. The, no, the way the wind blows, the, the shingles are reversed, like you know, the so it's it's rain, it blows, yeah, them, blows them up. And the roof isn't got that big of a pitch on the back side, and I think a lot of that's because, and that's another problem. Yeah. Because mm. so you want to get, it's cutting it. Yeah. But it starts at the cap, and the cap is tackled. Okay, so, sure. any other questions about highway department? <laughs> we'll move on to the transfer station. Yeah, I don't see anything. So what we have is replacing compactors in 2033 and 2037. Yeah. Does that make sense? For roughly 19,000. We can update that price as we get, I guess, closer to those years. Or, or someone. Or someone. Yeah. Or someone. Yeah. Yes. Well, there won't be anybody at this table. Someone. All right. Then I have haunts and huts. That's the lifespan of those? You can replace the components in it a lot cheaper than replacing the units. It, you know, the unit itself is going to last, you know, so 20, quite, you know, 30, the metal, 30, as long as it's not wearing metal on it and stuff. It can be patched up. But know. it's good to have it on the, on the mm. CIP. No, I have, so a, I have a question. Uh, the shed on the first compactor needs to be replaced. Oh. The operator shed. Oh, the little one? Yes. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the, the new compact. The, the metal floor that underneath one. all rotted out. It's starting to be unsafe. Right. But uh, it's, I don't think it's necessary a capital project. I think we can probably do it in the budget because we can build it yet, I said. Okay. So I, I, that's one of the questions I have. You know, that's maybe a replacement. Well, let's ask the board members here. I mean, does that seem like it? Yeah. What do, we, what do you think? So we need a couple thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I didn't want to put so nothing in. Okay, then that's no, fine. We're looking at a roof structure to put over the, over the recycling, keep the snow and stuff out of that. Okay. And again, that's going to be stuff that we can do that it's going to keep it out of the hook. No, it's no, not. Okay. Right. We mentioned, but we, we're talking about different ways of doing that too and saving money. Oh, okay. I'm trying, everything we're talking about is under the 10000 
you know, we've done in house. Yeah, most of the stuff we've done. Yeah, all the work we've done in house. Okay. Um, all right, so now pocket hats. Yeah. Okay. Two pocket hats for thirty thousand. So I assume they're fifteen thousand apiece. We decided to change our mind on that. Okay, so we can something we can build a wood structure where we we'll do the same thing instead of putting points in. You can actually have more room. But we're just looking at we're going to see what we're working on pricing for, uh, for that now. But again, the okay. trusses that are probably be the most expensive thing, and that shouldn't be that bad. So we can remove this from the. I don't think we need to put points in. Okay. Well, should we change the name of it to something else because we still need that much money? To yeah. Be quiet going on here. I mean, we are. Well, no, like, I think we should put it in the budget. But it's going to be under ten thousand dollars when you do it. Do you think? Yeah, it, yeah, I would guess so. Okay. All right. Uh, I have a high flow. What's a high flow? For Thirty-three thousand dollars. In twenty twenty-two. I think, this is under I think that's the skid steer. Yes, that's the like. Oh, oh, I see. Model. Replace that. Bobcat skid lower at 185 high foot. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it does say 2010, so I need a year too if I yeah. can smart it off to. Let's yeah. see where it says 2010 there. Pardon? My, maybe, maybe I just, maybe I just yeah, added. Under, under, I think uh, I probably added. Right here. Oh, just oh okay. I just, no, I just don't, don't ask. And I haven't had, I don't Trying drink. I don't drink wine with dinner when I have meetings, so. It's just <laughs> onset, well, early much. onset scenarios. Oh, I did that. Meetings will be a lot more fun. We have a fun time. <laughs> oh, I know. Okay. As long as we keep laughing. I think we're doing Is there anything else in the transfer station that over the next 10 years we should have? No, I think we've got it actually. We have the, a couple extra compact, I mean, uh, dumpsters over there, so. Whatever happened with the, the small compactor that... You have a small bale? Mm. Bale, they're, they're, sorry. They're, they're, they haven't picked it up yet. They're, gonna give us, they're still going to pick it up. They, they're bombed over there right now. Oh, okay. And we're yeah. going to get some money for Yeah, we're going to get some money for it. So. It, it's not worth fixing. Okay. Great. We had talked about using it to bale stuff inside, but it's... That's important. And then we didn't require rebuilding it, so we didn't really okay. spend anything on that. Great. Thank you. Do you have any questions of us? No, not really. Okay. Well, thank you so much, George. Nice to see you. Thank you. I, I, I will work on getting some. Yes, that would be helpful. Oh, three pipes. Yeah. I'll see what we can get for the skid steer and mm -hmm. the back hold on the yes. four days. Just take this message. Yeah. Yeah. Message for you and Ed. I, I don't come across anybody in town that doesn't say wonderful things about the Howie. Mm -hmm. So please make sure that we let Ed oh, yeah. them as well. Appreciate it. You know, we try our best to do it with as little help as possible, but mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes we have to bring some extra people in. Yeah. It's, uh, it's coming, the project went well. So, mm -hmm. just a follow up question. Um, Time wise, if we could, if we were to acquire this articulated loader, we could forfeit the Bobcat as a trade in for that purchase at that time. Further, but further down the line, or even currently, would we be able to give up the backhaul and not immediately assume the purchase of this um, excavator? In other words, could, could both those pieces be traded in towards the articulated loader and? Uh, that would put us in a bind for... That's what I'm asking. Would it leave you short somewhere? Right. I mean, if we get a call for... I mean, that could be used for trees down and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And that could not be handled by the articulated loader. In certain cases, we could push it off the road. We'd have to cut it up and stuff. But the, the other one, we could lift the, mm -hmm. lift the trees and load it in the truck, you know, mm -hmm. in light and stuff. We'd, it, it'd be we'd quite more work for us. But then, then we wouldn't be able to do any dish work until we had... Mm -hmm. Or and this word isn't something that, that's playing no, over. I mean, if we have to take a hole to, for any, you know, a water break or whatever, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, we got to deal with So the day the backhoe goes, we've got to have an excavator available. Yeah, available. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the thought. 
You know it's gone. Yeah, exactly. All right, anything else? I, said, I, I don't think that's, I mean, that would not be. Well, I guess, I mean, like you said, a, a pipe raise, a water yeah. pipe, you've got to excavate now. I mean, that's why we have the bucket. I mean, yeah, the backhoe. That's why we have the backhoe. Right, exactly. and, we, and we use the backhoe at the transfer station a lot to compact the dumpsters so we don't send them out empty. And, and if I may ask, is that because the water district does not have its own equipment? They don't have anything. They, have, they have no equipment. No. So, and actually, we, have we haven't been doing anything. But that's even better that's because there are roads. So as much I as we can have our people do stuff in our roads, that's to our advantage anyway. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. I was just curious as to... I mean, if they have a water main break, they usually have an outside contract to come in and do it. But, I mean, we have things that we have to dig up. We have to do, yeah. You know, oh, no, I, I understand, I understand and, that. And we could, like years. I said, we use that back over right now to compact the dumpster so we can still do yeah. it with the excavator. I just didn't realize the, they didn't. The demolition dumps. Yes, we have to contact. Now, I, I don't send them out half full. We don't well, you pay by weight, anyways, right? Right, but it makes sense to compact. Yeah. Yeah. But you also the have a haul charge. You can't afford the haul and empty. No, no you're not paying a haul and empty dumps. That's why we got that second compact, because we were hauling half and empty dumps. Two thirds, two thirds. But we had no other options just because of the days that the transfer station was over. So it made no sense. That's been working. I mean, we're holding one compact really with me. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Right. But the demo dumpsters lately have been, we're, we're lucky to make it the week with two. Well, it's but um, it's paying for itself. We're getting, we're getting it's income important. from it, so it's, uh, well, no, I, I don't, I'm, I'll, I'll see what I can do and get these numbers okay. for you as soon as possible. And, uh, Caroline, she, she, they, so. they already started working on just, I was just throwing these crazy ideas in my head until I figured, well, get the numbers now and see what we can go with it. So. Okay, well, thank you so much, George. Right. Thank, thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, George. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. Good night, George. Good night. Hi, George. Hi, George. Hi, Sean. Hello. You must be here to talk to us about the fire department. Yes. Ruffleford is out of town, so I apologize. I don't have another one with the computers. So, to start off, a couple of big changes. Um, if you look at last year, extrication equipment was not on the current capital improvement plan at all. Um, we had the company that services our Amcus school come out and say it is no longer serviceable, and they can't even test it. If they were to test it and it fails, we can no longer use it. We have to replace it. So does that mean you might go out on a call and go to If it fails, get a car door call, call then, then we have no... Well, okay. Is that a liability so, issue? Well, if you test it, it's been established that it's faulty. Right, I get you that. You know it's right. faulty. Right. Now you're on the That's why we're but if, not having it tested. Yeah. But right. if you don't have it tested and you go to a call and it fails, is that a liability issue? There's nothing that requires us to have it tested annually. Okay. Sean, is this to get people out of cars? Yes. That's the jaws of life. Yes. So we're required to have this piece of equipment on the truck. So, yes. Um, is there an NFPA standard that says we have to have it? No. Um, but if we don't have it, we end up calling mutual aid. If we're going on mutual aid calls, they expect us to have the equipment as well to be able to receive it. Sean may ignorance. How often is this used in a month or a year? I mean, you it, know, it it's depends. So we could go and not use it for nine months and use it eight times in the next two weeks. And, and literally, that's what's happened if you look over the course of the last three years. We'll have the wide spans where we don't use it. The roads will turn slippery, people go off the road, and we'll use it you know, three times in the next week. And then it'll go another couple of months, we won't use it, and then you know, we'll have a bad rack out on the floor and end up kind of three or four cars. And how old is the current piece of equipment that we have performed this? So it's the second oldest in the state. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we did your we saw, we saw, we saw oh, one of the kids get older. So Nashua has an older one that's a backup to their backup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I see. Um, so we're still the oldest. So we really should. I mean, yeah. so the oldest back first line of the backup. Yeah. Yeah. The back the back I'm pretty yeah. serious. Yeah. So can I ask why this has not been on the plan? Yeah. It, it, it was an oversight. Okay. Um, 
it, it's one of those things where you know the power unit still works. So the, the other big thing that's changed is when you think of an extrication equipment, there's really two pieces to it. There's the power head that has the motor and the hydraulic pumps in it. And then there's the actual units that do the work. So there's a cutter, there's a spreader, there's ramps. So two different components, mm -hmm. old way. The new way, they've actually incorporated it all into one, and they're battery operated today. So the advantage that that gives us is we no longer have a gas engine that we have to put into the fire truck. We no longer have to do the hydraulic hose wheels in the fire truck, which requires a lot of additional. So we can get the new battery operated for probably over half the price if we were to replace it exactly what we had today. So today, you'd have to buy new power head. If we replaced exactly what we have, new power head, three new tools. If we go with the new battery operated, it's just the tools that we bought. They're completely self-contained, come with two batteries, so we don't have to worry about what happens if one battery dies. Um, so th there's a lot of advantages for us and for the town. Um, you know, the, the way that the old hydraulic works is it builds pressure over time. So you go up to something, you start cutting, there's a pause. Well, the well actually builds pressure. The new equipment no longer does that. So the other advantage of replacing this is it's 20, this 88 to 90 is what they're estimating the age of the power head was. The, you know, we no longer have to wait for that. The new cars that are coming out have hardened steel on them. But everybody's wow. doing these now, right? I mean, if we were, this is the way it's going. So, 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 this is what they look like if you guys want to mm -hmm. circle these around. So, the fact that it was not on plan was just an oversight. It, it, it was. Sean, could you email me that? Yes. Yeah, it would be nice to have scan these things and get them up on I'll the send you all the PDFs. Beautiful. Thank you. That would be so well nice. Yep. It's perfect. Um, hmm. Thank you. It's good to read. That's, um, this that too. seems like it's a huge improvement. Yep. Thank you. That seems like it's a huge improvement. It, it is. Um, you'll notice it's stock to all batteries. So yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, stock to all yeah. no, We don't stock have to batteries. go down to you know, this specialized yeah. equipment. We can go down to Lowe's or Depot mm -hmm. and buy replacement batteries for it. So you know, over the Term. That's amazing. But more and more things are going battery operators. It's just amazing. It, it, and for us, that's a huge advantage because we don't have to worry about the gas going bad in the unit. When we go, um, they recommend once a month when we do our truck checks, change the battery out, it goes on the charger. So the <coughs> chief was here the other night and he was getting a dump of, I can't remember what the thing was he was buying because he wanted one on each of the engines. So we'll have one set of these. We have one set of these. Okay. It will go on engine two. There's a compartment that's already been kind of marked for it. Um, the idea is, is that we'll have the battery charges mounted in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're battery operated, so if engine two wants to go out of service, we can very easily move that to the utility or to the um, engine one. Again advantage over that mm -hmm. versus having the head, the hydraulic hoses, all of that, um, and has huge cost savings. 65000 to do it the old way, 30000 for us to buy the, the tools with the batteries. And that's, the, that's these two tools for 30000 It's actually three tools. So these are spreaders, the, the, the second set is the cutter, and then the, the third piece is the ramp. That 30 those three goes through the Because they all fit on the same, they all fit on the same one. Each one comes with two batteries. Oh, it's, it's a different body. It's, it's a different, different body. Yeah, it's a different tool. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's not a detachable head. Yeah, okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So this, this is one piece. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one exactly. I see now. These yep. handles all turn, so no matter what angle we're cutting at, it's a lot more heavier. I think that's really remarkable. It's actually a little bit heavier. Um, it's a bow. But it's not corded. You don't have hoses. You don't have anything. So it's free. It's balanced better, but it's about five pounds heavier because now your hydraulic motors 
picture in here. I see. So that, that's the big difference. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you say? There's no value resale trade in uh, uh, current, current services. It's just, it's just old. Museum quality. You said. Huh? So you have listed here 2019 slash 2020. So we had in the capital improvement the breathing apparatus um, from what the chief understands there's fifty five thousand dollars for um, Replacing the actual refilling station. I should say replacing, purchasing a refilling station. Mm -hmm. Right now, if we do internal training, if we go to a CO call, anything that's not a major event, when we come back to the station, our air bottles are empty. Mm -hmm. We have to call somewhere's worker over and ask them if we can come over and use their filling stations because we don't have one in town ourselves. Major incidents. Call Seacoast Chiefs and either Summer Source Caravan or mm -hmm. the air trailer come fill the bottles with that receipt. Yep. So it, it's the smaller mm -hmm. incidents, the training, that become uh, okay. very difficult for us because you know, we finish up training at 9 o'clock Monday night, mm -hmm. both of those stations are going to bed, so then we end up having to wait. Somebody has to come in the next day, fill the. the and if there were a call, Overnight, Monday night, we don't have tanks that are. So we always have enough that okay. we have two on the truck for each air pack. Um, you know, if we had a major call, we could call the air van at any time. You know, there are. Yep. There's, but it's, you know, being able to service ourselves versus constantly calling and saying, hey, can we come over to you know, fill our bottles? Did we just do bottles at number three and skip over number two? That was what was number one last year. That, that was number one. That's um, and that's where, if you look on this sheet, you'll see it says 2019-2020, slash and this one says 2021-2019. slash so, so what we're saying is, is the extrication equipment is something that we have to replace. We're willing to move that further down, continue the inconvenience, but we'd like to use the money that was in the month for this building station. Now to get the extrication equipment before we run into the problem when we're on the side of the road trying to get somebody out. It doesn't work. Is there a cost of charge involved for us when we fill our tanks at these other stations? There is not. If we had this equipment, is it something that we could maybe consider we could fill other <coughs> tanks and make some revenue that way? <laughs> yeah, be nice. Everybody else has their own. So you don't go over to Burlap, they have their own software, has their own. Burlap so that's not the so industry standard that if you have one of these stations, there's some side money. It's the industry standard that everybody has their own. So we have one behind the <laughs> yes. and, and, and or they do it for free because they know how important it is. They don't, they don't it's, use it as a property they do for pay. Well, it, yeah. it depends <laughs> on what's happening as well. So the air filling station, you're, you're, you're suggesting we move to 2021? Yes. Okay. If you were to come back and say, we can't move, mm -hmm move the extrication equipment to this year with the, the CIP funds that we have, then we go ahead with that purchase because that's what well, we rely on you for that. And you're saying this extra extrication equipment is, is, is vital and critical and it's now thing. I mean if that, that tells me you say you could don't mind continuing the inconvenience of going to these other filling stations. Um, what you're really saying is that I mean this is this is life not, safety. That's mm -hmm. now that's mm -hmm. not good. Yep. There you go. I mean, that's what we and that's so want to get, yeah. and, and just to just to clarify, like I, I realize it's not fifty five. There is fifty thousand. Okay. However, those aren't. I think I said this in Georgia. They're not cast in stone. Right? Yeah. So they're just. They could be. It's a placeholder. It's a placeholder. Things can be reshuffled and juggled because it's a complicated plan. And what you're trying to do is is meet the needs of the department's needs in a way that causes the. The tax rate not to, not to blow up, right? So you're trying to be as measured as you can with all of these things. And so, you know, when the, the date has an impact, because we can stretch it out, that's helpful. What's already in the plan is helpful, but sometimes <coughs> something, 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 something comes up, up and 
And so we took yeah. those things. And that out. was the benefit, just yeah. to for for you know go one step further with that. That was the benefit of starting and the conversation around starting this, this one capital improvement program and its one account was to allow for that kind of flexibility in for, you know interdepartmentally. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. We're trying to do the same thing. Saying we understand that it wasn't. You know, in the plan, so we're willing to be to move the air filling station okay. out a little bit further. Okay. So, so 2020 extrication equipment, thirty thousand, and we just just talked about what you say is now number three. The air filling 2019 station. is when we'd like it to be. Right. That's now. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that's what. Extrication equipment. Yeah. Well, yeah. We well, decided, that, I guess I. I'm sorry. Well, sorry. sorry I was. When I'm a Warren article, it's fun. Yeah. Are you? We can't, right? We can't. <laughs> Unless we take it out of the operating budget. Right. Which I don't think we, you know, that would, you know, if it failed and we had to, that's a different conversation, I think, than with withdrawing from the CIP. So even though we had money allocated for 2019 for the air it, station. It would have to go it's, on a warrant. The right? only yeah. authority to spend money from this comes from March. Oh, so that doesn't mean, I mean, you know, rest assured and take back to the department that if it failed altogether and you really felt like you had to buy one right now, you know, the select board, you know, that's a conversation with the select board. It doesn't mean that you can't buy it. It can come out of operating budget if the select board can find the money. You know, that's a different conversation. It doesn't mean it absolutely can't happen. Yeah. And it's also, you know, so it's three pieces, I assume about $10,000 each. Is there one that is super more critical? And that's part of what um, Chief Rothberg was saying is, is that if we could get these two pieces for 20 I see. Okay. And I think he talked to you guys briefly about that. Or here no. So these two are the most important pieces. Okay. Um, you know, this one allows us to cut mm -hmm. into cars, take roofs off, things like that. This allows us to take something that's all crumbled into a ball and yes. spread it out. Um, so you know, the thought was that if we have to do something, if we can manipulate the budget for that. So they, to spend that twenty thousand to get those two pieces, and that gives us the most critical thing. And then, you know, the following year, we can spend an additional ten for the Rams that aren't using as as often. Yeah. So it's so it's not a it's not a savings account. Yeah. The, well, 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 no. The, the, dif the difference is one, once the town authorizes you to spend it for a specific thing, you can't spend it on something else. That's the difference. I mean, what, what's in there? What's in there to be spent in the future? Right. You can spend on anything you want to, but the town has to authorize it for the specific thing. Sure. I believe that. Is. Yes. And that's uh, somewhat unfortunate because it means you know, more much in, in that case. It does. It's just the way. It, yeah. It's just the way it works. I mean. Yeah. But you know, having this allows us. You know, if, if all is working uh, the way it should, you know, we just do a warrant article and it says whatever for thirty thousand uh, dollars. With the funding coming from CIP. Um, so, so, so maybe more accurately, I guess, going to that, 2019 becomes 2020, 2021. Yeah. Maybe you're going to 21 and, and all of those things. So I think that may have been just how he, his mindset of well, planning I'm now this. rather than purchasing it. I do right. So, so right now we're going to have the extrication equipment for 2020. And we're going to leave it at 30, and if something happens during the course of this year, we'll, we'll make the work. Yes. All right, so, and then the air filling station, we moved to 2021 for 55000 so we'll have to up that, because it's currently 50000 Yeah, and then, you know, we have two different quotes, one's for 48, one's for 56. Okay. So, you figure a couple of years out. Makes sense. Um, makes sense. Okay, so now can we go to number two? <laughs> so the forestry uh, vehicle replacement, we've spent $2,600 in the last two months just keeping up with the forestry. It's all rusted out. Underneath. Sorry, how much again? $2,600. Uh, it's all rusted out underneath. We've had to replace brake lines, transmission cooling lines. It's just continuing to put more money in. The other problem with the current vehicle is, is that it's a two-door cab. We can get two, maybe three people in, 
there's no place to store gear that's out of the you know, weather, and then all kinds of, of challenges with that. So the, the plan for replacement would be a four cap, very similar to what the highway department utility style body, but with four horse instead of two. Uh, the other big thing with the forestry is part of the state mutual aid requires us to be able to send our forestry with four individuals on it. <laughs> that's, that's kind of tough. So they yeah. hang, right now they're hanging from the uh, we, we we got budget cards. They took the to the next day to get the current the current So the current vehicle was purchased from the old town road commissioner um, for exactly how much was in the budget. Never designed as a full restraint from both three. Yep. Mm -hmm. 2003 GMC half ton mm -hmm. Just a half ton. Mm -hmm. So we've had to put all kinds of additional springs in it, mm -hmm. suspension work, all of this just to get it able to haul the so you put $2,600 into that vehicle. It, it, yeah, it, I mean, it was a, a point that you couldn't operate it. Break lines. Yeah, the brake lines literally. Yeah. We, no, it, we, went to we went to the road. We went to the And there was a trail. Break through the road. So, so we called the radio and said, come back. Trail break through the road. They had to be towed to the over arm to have those replaced. Is there any value at all to it if you're trying to sell it? It's got a plow on it, so yes, yeah. there would be some value to it. I'm sure somebody would buy it. At One to two thousand or something? It has low miles, which I know is typical of a four wheel drive. Yeah, it's like we're have a plow. We have to have a plow. The other thing that's important for the board to understand is, is that the sliding unit in the back is exactly that. It's a sliding unit. So we'd be able to take that forestry unit out and put it into the back of a real view vehicle that's made for that. And so you know, we wouldn't have to reinvest in that. Measure. So the vehicle alone is fifty-five thousand. We're like uh, equipped with. That would, that's right now. You know what we're expecting. Is that using a some state? of our current equipment. State 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 state. Yes. And again, very what makes it more expensive than two door versus four door? Is that it? It's a one ton vehicle now. Uh, three uh, quarter. Quarter. Is that 55 included? That includes us reusing some of the current equipment that we have in the existing vehicle? Yes. So we would take that slide, you know, put it into the center of the utility body in the back. And what manufacturer are you looking for to get to that? That would be Ford or Chevy. Just, okay. so it's just, a, just a. It's a stock vehicle. Okay, okay. okay. So not a special order. It's, it's just a regular body. Oh, a vehicle capable of handling something heavier. Yes. That well, could plow a full cab, a, a crew cab. Yes. Crew cab, long box. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we could just buy that with some sort of fleet package. Yes. Yeah, so you buy a safe bed or whatever was, was cheaper or very similar to what I would have done. Yeah. And because of the current condition of the forestry vehicle, we just don't think we can put it out to 2021. So. You're going to be continuing to invest yeah. money in something that's a losing battle. Obviously, uh, clear, but yep. it's it's you know how much versus that that's that's it. Can we, is it? This is what the, the committee is going to be thinking about, and what the board will be thinking about as we try to shuffle these around and, and make the bottom lines come out to something that you know we think is. It depends on what rust stacks. The bottom of the transition mission runs out, and we're headed on well, a call somewhere. Can you, can you tell me what you um, use the forestry vehicle for? So the forestry is our primary four-wheel drive vehicle. So winter time, we roll it on that aids, has a plow on it, we're able to get into driveways that you know, may not be accessible. It's used for trees down, it's used for forest fighting, forest fire fighting. Okay, so um, that's why it's called forestry. I was just yes. trying to say, why is it called forestry? Yeah. So in the back of it, it has a 300 gallon water tank, a foam tank, it has all of our forestry tools, it has the ability to suction water and pump it out and all of that. Yep. And how many miles on it currently? 
it's, it's low mileage, I think. I thought it was like fifty five thousand. Yeah, I was thinking it's still spend twenty three hundred dollars on a sixteen year old half ton pickup truck. We just can't do that. I mean, it's, it's not a very you know you. Know, you yeah, they, it's, it's a two thousand dollar truck. Right? You know, it's not it's a, a, it's a problem. There's no value in that truck. It's July, and we got to make this thing last right. another. Yeah. Eight months. You can't do that. Yeah. Right. This has been on. Um, for several years, yeah. um, and it's always gotten kind of bumped down. Okay. Literally for more important stuff. You know, this is last year, so it was number two last year. If you look yeah, you know, we're at the year we're before. We're spending $2,300 in two months. Okay. Well, that's definitely going to be moved up. I mean, this so, is so will the new truck, will, 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 will the plow on the, on the existing truck go on the new truck, or will the new plow have to be purchased? Probably the new plow will need to be purchased. Mm -hmm. They completely changed the that the hydraulics, I mean, this is the old side hydraulic, and so it, I think we need to see that real figure though. I, mean, I, yeah. I, I think to not buy this plow, this truck properly equipped, right? I mean, without the plow, it, it, it loses some of its right. You, you've got to, no. it's got to be what we need if, if we're going to take this other on service to separate it. And so, and we're figuring the vehicle's 50 5,000 for the plow. Oh, that includes it. Then. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't sure. Okay, yeah. thank you. Oh, so the price, the price is okay. that made. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what you're saying. Statement changes. That's what we need to see. Right. Yeah. So fifty-five thousand replaces the current yes. vehicle. Yes. Okay. Um, so you know, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, you know, further out, I mean, we just replaced engine two. Mm -hmm. Engine one was bought three years after engine two. Mm -hmm. Or the old engine three. So you know, we need to start thinking about that way out 2026. But it's a big dollar number. So I have 2028 in the plan from last year. So am I wrong? He, he moved that. That will give us. Five years in service. All right, so. Which is five more years than most recommend. Yeah. We went through it all in the last 10 no. minutes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, any questions on that? Are right, paving the side parking lot? Not, not to interrupt, but we still, I should have asked, 600 still? So the, the one that we just bought ended up between 450 and 500 fully equipped, so. Yeah. Right. It's going to be at least that or more. Yeah, they may go up as the years go along as we get closer to the yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, I know you say it's not a savings account, but that's a good example of why it would make sense. Well, we're going to be, I, I, I think what I was trying to say is that it's not theirs to use at any time. Right. right. But we definitely want to know about the replacement. We don't know how much it is, so we can start to. Yep. Yeah, we need to plan it. So we do, we do put things in boxes, and, and uh, but they're movable. Right. So if something crazy happens, and we have to go to the town one March, we may be doing some fiddling around with the money that we've already said we were. Yep. But it doesn't change the fact that we've got six hundred thousand dollars, and it still is going to come out on the bottom line somewhere. It's just you know when. Okay. Um, Hopefully not all of them here that we're buying. <laughs> yeah. Paving the side parking lot, if it's a dirt parking lot, we can't maintain it well in the winter. You know, it's, it's dirt, so it doesn't clear up after they plow it. We put sand on it. It's slippery. It's a safety concern. Um, so we can take you to recommend that that's something we should look at. at doing. That I would recommend that we not put on CIP, but that the board make part of the road maintenance plan because it would be much more feasible to just add it to whatever the new project is. I was going to ask about that. You know, this is such a small job. You just sort of tack, you know, technology probably tack it on. That's the least expensive. Right? And I would say the same about yeah. the ramp. But can you, so about half the ramp was done, or once, like, you know, the new just building. Just in front of one. So you're talking about the rest of the bays? Yes. Okay. And even that, it was done, but it wasn't completely redone with new drainage. So that ramp right now is not drained properly. It's oh, <coughs> um, 
major, a major undertaking that requires the OT involved in everything. So yes, and funny you should say so because that um, concrete pad with drainage should be part oh, of the so same thing at the so same time. Yeah. Part of our stormwater regulations are going to dictate how we do some of our municipal operations, including the washing of vehicles, which can happen on that concrete pad, pad with a drain down the middle, which can tie into the drain along the front, which DOT absolutely has to be a part of because it will be part of their storm drain system. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it is, you know, it's probably worthwhile to think about and talk about where are you going to put a concrete pad big enough that you can fit your largest vehicle with a drain under it and have that tied to drain into the front of the ramp. Start talking to DOT about permissions and if they're okay with that and what that's going to look like and then budget for that whole operation at once. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a, a major issue because from there. Well, yeah. If so we have the side parking lot, but now you're talking the safety of pulling a large engine in there or backing it up into the road or backing it from the road into that side parking lot. That's... So we do have a facility in town that, that, ha that, that has that set up. It's CMJ. Right? I'm just saying. Briefly, I mean, they have the indoor. CMJ <laughs> has it's indoor indoor it's wash. Mm -hmm. But it, it's specialized for the buses, oh, okay. yeah. so it's not. And they wouldn't want to probably fire them too quickly. Well, have mm -hmm. we checked? Just the the buses are different size and width. And yeah, that's true. I think that's just a only issue that eventually we're going to have to pass something like this. Yeah. Isn't that the case? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the transfers to the highway department also needs. And maybe that's the thing is that you drive it to the highway department yeah. and then there's one big thing for to get would, us in convenience. That would make more sense. Yep. So, so keep in mind as soon as we leave the highway department and drive it down the road, it's now covered with salt again. The whole reason we're washing yeah, it off is to keep the salt that's, that's, off of it. So, if you come down and watch our guys wash the truck and they, they wash it, they hand squeegee all of the water off of it. it, it it's not it's not a garden hose. Well, 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 it, 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 it's a garden hose and it's scrub brushes and we have different brushes for the truck versus the tires versus the rims but it, it's not you know, we try to take care of our equipment and, and the town is so gracious. And you're right, it makes sense to have it right, right, right on site obviously as well. Alright, <laughs> so so, this number six then is much bigger than what you think it is. Yes. So, <laughs> that that is it possible to like extend it and, and or, or are we going to be compelled to do something sooner than that because of stormwater? Um, I don't think it's, I think it's 2022. It doesn't have to happen certainly before 22. Um, I'm not sure that it's even within our five year window necessarily, but I think the first step is to quantify a real price and talk to DOT. Yep. So well, and, and even like work out what like like how big would such a pad be and and is there even anything like besides the parking lot like maybe parallel to the road on near on the ball field side or something right? In the front? ball fields. There's actually a leach field over there. So yeah. Yeah. You can't do it in front of the leach field. No. But okay. you pull the, pull the, the, the vehicles out of the garage to yep. wash. Yep. Couldn't wind up in front of one of the bays, like especially in this side, you're talking about the apron that where the, where the um, pavement is sunken, which tells me that the footing on the beneath there is poor anyway, so realistically, all that has to come up anyways. Well, and they did that, and it's much better than it was. On to both bays? Yes. Okay. It's much better than it was. Again, they didn't redo all the drainage, they didn't do all of that. So, so but understand, when we pull it out, our nose is on the white foot line. line. But so so I guess that's another question is is it is it okay for you to do what you're doing if, if we installed you know foot wide drains that run along the edge of the road between the ramp and the road that leads into the stormwater system? Maybe. Um, but I think it's gonna cost some money in professional services mm -hmm. for an engineer to go out and spec and price out. We also find that the requirements are going to be 
you said this is something that's coming down the line. Is this something well, and actually, it should have happened through Storm Drain. It has exactly. to get, it, it, it has to get, like, put, it has to be captured so it can be empty. Yeah. The, the whole point is to keep it out of Storm Drains. Because it's contaminated and you don't want it in the river. Contaminated so, 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 so it's possible, just thinking out loud, that the engineering study can happen in our operating budget. Yes. So as we get, um, to get more, better idea of what this project is, can we, I will 2022 ask, sounds too soon for something that we're so unclear about what it is that we actually need. I agree. I would put it out until at least 24. Um, I, I would want to stay within our current MS4, MS4 permit, permit, which goes to, still, um, I think, 24. <laughs> well, if we get approval for it in 24, in March, if we're theoretically ready to go then, then it meets the... Yeah, most of the MS4 stuff is about like planning and intent. And, and less about doing, but also the MS4 year ends at the end of September. At some yeah. point they will be doing that. Yes. Sure. Yes. At some point they will be. Yes, the beginning stages is a little easy on us, but we're showing progress. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I'll get a price from the engineer. I'll mm -hmm. see you next week. I'll oh, ask okay. how much it would cost to have him cut down the spec map. What's that? Thank you. Replace fire station roof? So, much like the highway department, every storm that comes through, we have stuff blow down, shingles, the uh, Metal wrap around has fallen off. We're replacing at okay, so 25, 30,000. Okay. Is there anything else that that you think the fire station that's that we should be that should be captured here or like we bought that washing machine? Should that be on here for replacement eventually? So they came up and serviced that uh, month, month and a half ago and said it's in great condition. We're doing very well. Um, so I don't know how to expect it. That's not anything close. How much was that? Was that a five thousand dollars? Yeah, it was it was not it was worth ten thousand. Okay. So it's probably something that they would, you know, require to know about ahead of time put it in the operating budget. A washing machine? Like for yeah, for clothing, for, 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 for turnout. Oh, okay. So it's a specialized front load that can deal with that every year. Um, get rid of any sterile stuff. Let's get the sleeping yeah. bags done. Yeah. Take all the sleeping bags and. Uh, I, I <laughs> wouldn't suggest yeah. that because <laughs> our, our, our stuff's pretty little gross when it goes in there um, after a fire with all imagine. of the contaminants from a fire. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, the only thing that I would say that. that Chief Rutherford and I talked about even further out would be the utility. Um, but it's not. The one we just bought. What do you mean the utility? The utility van, the utility van that we bought back. Um, Chief Smitty bought it, so it was eight years, nine years ago. So, so we should, you should probably come on here. Yeah. So maybe you could email long. Caroline. Maybe you could email Caroline with a year, because it's probably going to be somewhere in this 10 yeah. years. So 2009. Yeah. So we're going to have to start yeah. putting money away for it like three or four years from now or something. Yeah. Or whenever. So if we could maybe email yep. Caroline or me or somebody to so like, get it on the plan. Yep. And the other thing, I do have uh, a septic upgrade. Is that? So, so this goes back to um, you know all of that work right now. Um, water and sewer comes to from the station about 400. The carrots. Yeah. So, you know, does it make sense to continue to put a new septic leach field? Um, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had issues this year. Um, but prior to that, twice, three times a year, we'd have a backup of septic to the station. It's the original from 1978. It has to be. Um, yeah. So that was happening, it's no longer happening. Has you happened recently. Maintaining it better. He did something, I think, last year, some kind of yeah. maintenance. Yeah. We were, yeah. We were it out. But. So. So, 
Would it be, um, let me ask the water district, the water sewer district, you know, it, it would be up to the commissioners at any given time whether or not they would be willing to extend the line, so there's no guarantee that they would, but if they would, what would be the cost? And then we can compare that to septic so that we just know that it's X percent more or less to do it one way or the other way. Right. So the question is, I mean, it's, it's, it was on the plan. Should it stay on the plan? I don't know. I'm reluctant to take it off. I think it should it, at least to serve as a reminder that there's an issue one way or the other. So I have it on the plan for 2023 at 40000 It's interesting because there's no bedrooms. That's how they design septics. So based on when you start using it as a municipal building, it's difficult to say how much is it going to, to cost. So that, that comes right off the plan. Yep. Is there anything, any replacement associated with that that we need to think about? So what we've done is we've moved that into the operating budget so that we're replacing a certain amount every year so that we don't have to do the huge capital purchases again. Okay. And the command vehicle over the next 10 years is probably not something we're going to... I would put it in there, though, as a placeholder, as a reminder that at some point we need to start putting money away for it. Yeah, I mean, I mean sort of all the vehicles should be I think all the vehicles schedule, should right? be on there, just um, even if it has a ridiculous date. But it's a 10 year plan, so yeah, something that's yeah. 10 years old now is 12 yeah. years old. Yeah. Well, but in year eight, maybe you need to start putting, putting money away for it. That's so the purpose of the plan. You just don't want to forget. Right. In the place I mean, we've got there. some things like the, the compactors, they're here, but they're, they have no financial impact on the 10 year plan. You know, the, the ones we talked to George about, because he's got, we've got years 2033 and 2037. So, but they're, they're here, so as we get, you know, as the 10 year plan starts to creep into those years, then we'll know. To, to start thinking about them more actively. Well, this should be on the plan, and there's several things we've pushed back in the fire department, like you said, the room for the septic. Mm -hmm. But as we've all learned, something can go from sixth on the list this year to second tomorrow. It'd be mm -hmm. nice if we've already started thinking about it, and had discussions if it's a place, if it's the place is held, because it can certainly become yeah, much so more important if something failed in your current vehicle example. So the only other vehicle that we need to go on that is the tank truck. And what's the step? What's our permanent tank truck? Is that Do you know the year off now? Is it 07? Does that sound right? I think so. so, as far as tank trucks go and its lifespan, where are we? So, it's not as heavily utilized as our engines. It's a more volatile, especially piece of equipment. Something that, because we're so residential, we don't have higher efforts. Mm -hmm. At some point, whether you use it or not, it's begun, going to become obsolete, and, or you're not going to be permitted to use it simply because of its age or its status. So, and is that going to happen? Yeah, next lifespan wise, where are we? Yeah, I would, you know, 2028, 20, I think. So, within 10 years, you think that this should be I think that's where we're going to start to look. Start to look, yes. So, and what price? Just can you give me a price? So, I'm about to make up a number. Here we go. Yeah, I would say. That's three five oh comma zero zero. Just checking. Just checking. At that time, it would be five hundred. That's why. Okay. Yeah, that's why we need to have it on there. Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. Anything else? Do you have any other questions? No. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Bobby. Oh, my pleasure. I appreciate it. Chief Archer as well for his time.
he will be back and be able to come to the next one. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Sean. Sean. Okay, so we're going to go to Jennifer right here. Our next meeting is Tuesday, August 13th, mm -hmm. and we are not getting uh, any input from anyone else. Is that still correct? What about Tom Hall? We talked about input on the building. I don't have any news about that yet, and um, Mr. Fortier has been on vacation. We've had trouble with vendors trying to get quotes on the portico, which was supposed to actually happen this year, and we still don't even have a quote on it. Um, so. I don't know what to say about that. So, do we just keep what's already there and just, I mean, up right now, the town hall boiler is still on it with zero dollars right now. There was some issue about, yeah. I th yes, so I, I guess that's a placeholder because assuming it's purchased this year or next year, it will again need to be replaced at some point. It is a piece of equipment, so, you know, it ought to stay there, I suppose. Um, it's not clear that it'll get replaced this year or next year or not at all. Okay. So, but but the money so the money is still in CIP until a decision's made about that. Yep. But right now it's not adding any more dollars. It's just there is right. zero. Right. Right. Okay. And actually, that money has been released from the CIP balance. It can just be. And it would be put back in. So I can tell you that we have four AC units that need to get replaced, and that's probably going to cost sixty thousand dollars. So I have here. Are those the compressors you're talking about? Yes. So they they are here, but I have five, and I have one hundred forty-four thousand dollars total. Well, so we did one last year, so one doesn't need to happen right now. Well, right. So you can separate them into one plus four. The time span wise, are we still thinking that the remaining four are going to go to? Well, that's what I don't know yet. Um, what we've recently learned is that they've been essentially not maintained, but also that they date back to the renovation, which is their lifespan. So they can go at any time. One went last year or the year before. So um, we could lose them at any time. They're about, I think, $12,000 is what we spent on that one last year. So why is why is the price, does the price seem so expensive? Well, I'm just basing that price, the sixty for four, based on what we spent for the one last year. But I don't know where that figure came from, and I may be wrong after we learn more. But they're going to be more expensive. We paid twelve for one last year. Right. That's why I said sixty. This you know. year. Right. Yeah, but that's still a far cry from one hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's, it's much lower. Maybe that's just nice. a boiler and part of like ventilation. It's like right. I mean, it might have been like that's unit price and, and maybe, at, you know, installing new associated vents right. or something. So I, I guess know. I'll keep it. I would keep it because, you know, but we absolutely know we're going to need that level of money or more for all the things that are going to have to happen in this building. Right. Yeah. Uh, the town, uh, you know, police facility, town administration, I mean, I. It's right now. It's it's a little confused because it shows you know two point some odd million in gross capital cost. We haven't really changed the amount of uh, money that we we're putting in every year. Right. Um, then I've got Old Mill Lane Bridge. So it's, did you send a note? Like this is months ago now. That somebody talked to someone and there was an alternative solution then. Replacing the bridge. Yes. Oh. It was, it was I. It was you. It was yeah. I. Would you like to know what I thought? Yes, please. So we were at the dump one day, and I talked to the person. Is it Paul? Paul. Oh, oh. There are two it's falls. The person, it's the person who lives yeah. across, oh, that's Martel, yeah. across Old Mill Lane Bridge. Yep. And he said, you know, there are two houses there. Mm -hmm. Two houses. And this is like, like, you know. Kills me that there's so much money that we're spending for two houses. But he said there's so little use on it. And he did do some, somebody who did some logging at first, which was sort of heavy duty, but I, that, that's done. And there's such little use that he's saying, you know, why can't you just let this thing go and then put it, put another temporary bridge? 
you know, the same sort of thing. The thing that's there is the thing that's there now. Yes, it's considered temporary, yeah. but it had a lifespan of maybe ten years. I don't remember exactly, but I think it can go a lot. It's going to last a lot longer. And he said, "Don't, don't build don't, a don't build heavy a duty bridge, bridge there." And so the price. Let's, let me see if I can find my notes. I also have price on uh, uh, notes on. Okay, so we are the bridge is on the, the, the state's bridge replacement program for whatever years. I'm now not on that tab, but whatever year, whatever year it's for. Twenty twenty seven. So, and at the moment, the CIP represents only our portion. So it's a it's an eighty twenty. Okay, the, the state pays eighty, we pay twenty. That's that's what. It is. It's 20% of the total cost. It's, wow. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it's a million dollar bridge. It's, it's, a, it's expensive. Yeah. So we would, however, when that year comes, we, from a cash flow perspective, we would need to pay it all. Okay. And then the, the state pays us back. So it would require a short term loan or something like that. I'm just saying that so, so that information yep. has been passed along to somebody else other than just me. So, and it's in the CI, I mean, if you've got the spreadsheet or when, it's, it's in the notes tab mm -hmm. of the spreadsheet. But, you know, if we can do it for, you know, just um, 80,000, you know, every 20 years, then is, is that, the, I don't know. I mean, I'm just passing it along. A red -listed it is red listed. So some work will have to be done talking to the state, talking to engineers. But I brought it up because, you know, it did kind of make sense. But it, you have to run the numbers, and you have to talk to somebody, and you have to talk to the state, and blah, blah, blah. So, but that's, that's what was in the CIP. What you're seeing there is what is the result of the work that we did with the state Department of Transportation to get it on the bridge there. 20% well. Um, Do you have the information, Caroline, that we've got to cough up the whole thing? It's in the notes. It's in the notes. Okay, sorry. It's in the notes, Cash. It's, it's in my time. head, and hopefully now okay. it's in other places. Yeah. You would you would know that as you get closer. Because they'll say that all the paperwork, hey, it's coming, they'll, all the letters will yeah. say that. I mean, it's you know, it's not uncommon as what we did with with uh, you know, it's these cost reimbursables, what we did with the USDA and the culprits. Mm -hmm. We had to pay it out. It is, you know, we submitted invoices. So that's blah, blah, blah. Um, all right, so that's the old Mill Lane Bridge. Uh, town Hall Roof. Again, that was the result of a conversation that I had with roofers, a roofer, the same person who looked at the uh, highway department. And he said 2024, 60000 So that's why that's there. Uh, security upgrade, I don't know what that is. That's there about $1,000. Um, Cameras and also about like the key card fob system. Okay, and then LED street lights, which doesn't have a cost. So that's what's in the, this building right now. So we'll just leave it. If there's any information we can find out from now until our meeting on. Yeah, but uh, wasn't there some assistance we could get with replacing some lighting? For security, is it some state money that yeah. offsets those kind of right? yeah. it, It's pretty much 50% depending on how you go about it. Of like the cost it, of actually transitioning to, to that type of bulb or whatever? Yeah. They had to replace the whole fixture. Um, and, well, it depends on what you have. And yeah, it's, it's different in every room and every building. In the fire department, they're going to have to change fixtures because they have old ballasts. Here, we're fine and it's just about different things. Part really? of this cost, cost is offset. Okay. Part of the cost is, is, a, is, a, is a door and you don't have to pay. So yeah. the loan costs whatever the loan, it's a loan forgiveness program. So the loan is for X to do the whole yeah. project. There's a state grant for half of that. So it's a loan forgiveness program. So the town's on the hook for 50% of the cost of the whole overhaul. Yeah. And then that can be either paid up front or um, which would make sense for some of the smaller facilities or for something like Town Hall. It just becomes part of the operating budget. You can continue to pay your regular electric bills. 
you're, you've got LEDs, so your electric your usage is oh, way down, and the difference pays off the principal. I so the paybacks are crazy. It's like two to two and a half. Time wise, it's quicker. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna yeah, start saving. Really Plus, we need new fixtures at half the cost. Yeah. Yeah. They all just at half cost. Yeah. So, They're all different though. Yeah. Not looking. All right, so if there's anything else that you can tell us on August 13th about town. If you want to make a note about the portico, it's not, you know, like it's, it's, it's not on this. Well, right, it was, so, and I, I you know. Operating budget, right? I thought it was budget. in the operating budget. Well, it is in the operating budget, but I'm thinking it's probably going to extend to the level of CIP, but it might be handled in the operating budget. I'm still waiting for a quote, but it's, you know, to my mind, it's probably going to cost over $10,000 to repair the portico. It's got structural issues. Um, it, maybe it can wait until 21. I don't know, especially, you know, depending on... So the portico, for, let's say, you want me to put it for 10 or... Put, it, put Portico for 15 and, 15, and 20, it, 21? Yeah, and it might end up being 30 and more immediate, but you know, <laughs> we'll see. It's a something, it's, it's a reminder. It's a specialty contractor that we're trying to get this book from. Like yes, and, and he's booked and he's busy, and you know, it's part of our labor shortage in New Hampshire that contractors don't have enough help, but um, we're going to ask um, Mr. Fortier if, who, who fixed who fixed the cupola, and maybe the cupola people might be appropriate for the portico, and I don't know if that can be another way to get another quote, or it might be a better person, I don't know. We have to check with them, because we had the cupola, we, we thought we had it done a year ago, or two years ago. It's nice. It looks it's nice, nice, doesn't it? During the restoration, did they actually, I know they, they tried to maintain as much original wood as possible, but when they had to replace things, was it all period correct? No. Okay. okay. We so did not, it's not go, We did not go historically correct, but we did go with real wood, and it is and it is on a regular maintenance schedule now. So it will it will be kept painted. But and we were required. No, we are not required to historical. Do that. We are not required to do that. Guidelines. Okay. And would we be would that be the case with this bill? That it's yes, the yes, same. It's the same thing. They're both on the historic registry, um, so the same rules apply, which is to say. Essentially, we can, we can do anything we want to with the school, the town can do anything they want to with, 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 with this building, including raise it to the ground, you know, just, just knock it down if they want to. However, being on the historical register allows you to get, um, to, get to, to apply for funds from, from these uh, places, and when you do that, so you might, have, you might get 50% paid, or you might get Gets ten thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars, whatever you get, fifty percent of that. Um, but then you are also bound for the life of the, what that project is. So if they renew the portico and they say, well, that's fifty years. For fifty years, you can't do anything to the building without their permission. So there's a cap. <laughs> yes. As soon as they lend you Strings money, as soon as they lend you they money, you are, you are. Um, so, and, 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 and it's great to get the money, and, and you can do it. And that's really a good thing if it can happen. But yeah, there's a caveat. Yeah. So we're all set for a meeting on Tuesday, August 13th? Here. No department heads, just us. Just us. And so how do we, so what we're hoping to do is come out of that with a recommendation to the board? Is that? And if you could send me a PDF that I can print so we can all have, for those of us who Absolutely. are looking at a screen. A and what I will meeting. probably do, just because that's, that I, I need to, I just need to do it for myself. I, I will, I'll, I'll hand I'm going to put in the changes just as they were given to us tonight. And I'm going to look at it and do my own. Jiggle. So I'm going to jiggle things around no, to no, try to that's... figure things out. So we'll come to this group with my jiggles and you can look at it. And... That's what we're paying I think for. that's... <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's... <laughs> and you're paying top dollar at that, so you <laughs> betcha baby. Yeah. But I, would, I would like to see the trade information. Yeah, some other information. Yes, yeah, so we're going to so, 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 so